The man who's been tasked with investigating foreign interference in our elections will be testifying before a parliamentary committee on Tuesday. Special Repertoire David Johnston will have to explain to MPs why he advised against calling a public inquiry into alleged meddling by Beijing in the last two federal elections. Last month, Johnson said a public inquiry wasn't necessary because most of the key information is classified and can't be disclosed publicly. Johnson wants to hold public hearings instead. And let's now bring in Tom Mulcair, CDV News political commentator and former NDP leader in the conversation. Tom, good afternoon and thank you for your time. Good to be with you, Akshay. So let's make a start with Tuesday and then some other news we have to also catch up on. Johnston will be testifying Tuesday. What can you expect? Of course, MPs have a lot of questions this time around. This is understandable, Akshay, because the report that he put together doesn't respect Parliament. And also, the letter that he wrote in the Globe and Mail doesn't respect Parliament. And there was a strong vote for him to step aside because of the obvious conflict of the fact that he was at the Trudeau Foundation up until the time Trudeau named him Special Rapporteur. And if that wasn't enough, uh, as Jagmeet Singh said, uh, as he was putting his motion forward, look, the, the lawyer who accompanied him, the person we just saw in those images, Akshay, has been giving to the federal Liberal Party for years and years. And why that was never checked or thought to be a potential problem or an indication of potential conflict or perception of conflict of interest is amazing. Why I say he's lacking respect for Parliament, it's not only the motion that was adopted that he says he's not going to obey and he doesn't care about because he's more important because he's got a mandate, as he says, from the prime minister. But what's disturbing about that letter that he published is this. He seems to put himself above that institution. And the irony, of course, is his whole work is supposed to be about protecting and defending our de democratic institutions. And what's more important in those institutions than the House of Commons and its 338 duly elected members. So what Johnson said in that letter is, is this as well. I'm going to give you a report. I'm going to hold hearings and I'll talk about things like diaspora communities. And then I'll make recommendations. And you, the members of parliament, will be accountable to Canadians if you don't follow my recommendations. He is literally putting himself above parliament and believes that he can actually put down conditions that, people, that members of parliament will be judged on if they don't follow. It, it literally is a case of, of putting the cart before the horse. And, and <laughs> the tail wagging the dog, whichever image you want to use. So I'm, I'm going to find this very interesting on Tuesday. It's going to be a three-hour uh, meeting with that committee. Now, he has one thing in his favor, Johnston does, mm -hmm. and that is that the members of that committee, we've seen them any number of times over the past few months, are not very good uh, at getting to the point. They, they love talking amongst themselves. They go around in circles. If they come in surgically with a series of questions and they cross-examine Johnston, they might get to the bottom of some of the, the things that they're concerned about. But if it becomes one of these things that we've seen month after month where they talk and they're trying to position and preen and posture and try to get people to look at them as a potential replacement for the Liberals, then it's going to be a, a lost exercise. This is serious stuff, Akshay. This is about whether or not a foreign country interfered in a Canadian federal election. It's really serious stuff. Indeed. But unfortunately, all the sideshows have been taking over and we're not going to get to the bottom of it, certainly not with David Johnston. It is extremely serious. And also, of course, Canadians want more transparency. After all, this is about our democracy, Tom. But let me exactly. ask you this, the fact David Johnston is just not anyone. He is a former governor general of right. the country who has, right. if I may use the term like you were saying, brazenly disrespected the will of the parliament and the members of parliament who have wanted him to step down from his position. Tom, the concern here is the kind of precedent this is actually uh, be, uh, putting forward in, in terms of future. I mean, if this is happening today, whether it's the Liberals today, it could be the Conservatives or some other government tomorrow, what sort of precedent does it actually set? Exa uh, you've hit the nail right on the head as far as I'm concerned, Akshay. That's what this is about. I mean, Trudeau, of course, loves this sort of game because now he stands there defending David Johnston. By the way, I was one of the people who thought, applauded when he was named to this role. I said, well, yes. what could be better? He's a former Governor General, you know, former dean of law, principal of McGill University. He's got, and I know him well. I mean, he's a really fantastic person. But when we found out that right up until the time he was named special rapporteur, he was at the Trudeau Foundation, and that foundation was going to be 
under the magnifying glass because mm. of the fact that the Chinese Communist Party tried to give them money, obviously, to try to get some sort of influence with the Trudeau government. That's what they, they, were ha they had in mind. But we've got to get to the bottom of that as well. How can you possibly do that? You can't be the judge at a party in your own case. Uh, so, so he knows that because he is a lawyer, because he is a former law professor. He knows that basic rule. And so he, he seems to not care about it when it applies to himself. He's managed to rationalize that somehow he is in a position to do this credibly. He's hired a crisis management yes. communications firm with taxpayers' money to try to push out the type of thing that we saw in the Globe and Mail. The minute the NDP put on the notice paper 10 days ago, the Thursday 10 days ago, they put out that notice that they were going to bring, bring this to the House last week. The next day, he had that paper that I just referenced drafted in the Globe and Mail. Right. There are huge problems with that paper, but that's the type of thing that's drafted by a crisis management communications firm that doesn't know anything about our parliamentary institutions or how things work, but it was to try to get him off the hook. Yeah. Now Trudeau is trying to get himself off the hook saying, he's such a great person. How dare you criticize him? By the way, he is a great person. Right. He just can't be the person doing this work right now. True. I have very little time, Tom. My producer is telling me we need to wrap up, but I have a question for you. We have discussed how serious this is, the implications of this in the future. So if that is the case, why is it that NDP's Jagmeet Singh say, why does he say that NDP will not trigger an election on this particular issue? Why? Mr. Singh tries to rationalize that by saying, well, if we don't know we can have a clean election without foreign interference, we get a, we have to have that cleared up first. That's why we need a commission of inquiry. But since that commission of inquiry would take years anyway, yeah. it's a bit of a thin excuse. I think the real reason is that the NDP is not ready to go to an election right now, but they're not going to say that. So they came up with the other rather complicated explanation that not too many people are buying on shit. All right. We leave it at that. But it's always great to have you on the show. Tom Mulcair, thank you so much for your time. Good to be with you, Akshay. All the best. You too.